Well, good evening. Welcome to Westwood Baptist Church. I'm glad you're all here tonight. Please join me in standing. Turn to page 869. Brethren, we have met to worship. 869, followed by I'll Fly Away. On the first. Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit of all Holy One comes down. Brethren, pray and holy manna will be showered all around. Brethren, see poor sinners round you, so bring on the death is coming, hell is moving, and you bear to let them go. See our fathers and our mothers and our children sinking down. Brethren, pray and Holy manna will be showered all around the last. Let us love God supremely. Let us love each other's too. Let us love and pray for sinners till our God makes all things new. Then he'll call us home to heaven. At his table we'll sit down. Christ will gird himself and serve us with sweet manna all around. 828, I'll fly away all three stands of the song, please. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. To our home on God's celestial shore, I fly away. I fly away, oh glory, I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. When the shadows of this life have gone, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars have flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away on the last Just a few more weary days And then I'll fly away To a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away I'll fly away, oh glory I'll fly away I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Amen. Amen. Great singing. Good to see each and every one of you here this evening. We have some guests with us this evening. Philip, why don't you introduce uh, Christiana's uh, family to us? Since she left, and you're here all by yourself. Are you going to name them by name? Mindy. All right. Well, we're glad you guys are here visiting from Oregon, and uh, we, we sure love Chris Ann around here, and and uh, Philip, will, he's all right. Barely. Barely all right. Philip, why don't you open us up in a word of prayer, would you please, sir? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have not received a prayer sheet, if you didn't grab one on your way in, if you'll raise your hand, Brother Philip and Brother Jared has those. They'll be passing those out here 
uh, this evening if you haven't received one. A couple announcements. The teens will be leaving at 9.30 on Saturday morning for a day in Lubbock on the trampoline park, other activities going on there. Uh, they need to bring um, money for lunch and supper. I think all the activity costs are covered. Is that right, Brother Gary? And so uh, if you're planning on going, uh, please make sure Brother Gary knows about that. Please make sure you're here at 9.30 or you'll be wishing you went. And so encourage you to do that here. And then the teen Bible study uh, on Wednesday nights will be starting September 7th. You know what? We're, we've made the, we're going to make this announcement for about a month, Brother Gary, and there'll still be teens go, we don't know what term it started. So what time does it start? You guys remember? 6.30. Did you say 9.30? April. All right, so it starts at 6.30. So parents, you need to drop your kids off. And uh, just be early for time fellowship here at the church. We'd love for you to be, do that. Uh, 6.30 teens bring uh, schoolmates. Invite others to come with you. It'll be a great time. It really will. The Bible study, the emphasis on the teens on the Wednesday night program. And uh, they'll be finishing up, wrapping up about the time we wrap up here on the Wednesday night service. And, um, and encourage you to do that. Then also parents, don't forget. There's a date night. Uh, the College and Career will be uh, watching the children on September 9th uh, from 6.30 to 9.30. And so I uh, encourage you uh, to bring your kids, drop them off here. We'll provide pizza for them, and they're, they're going to babysit uh, so you can go and have a date. All right. And then um, let's see here. Fifi. Oh, 8.30. But if you're like me, when I was a parent, they said 8.30. If I was out with my wife, I might not come back to 8.30. I'm in trouble. Brother Taylor, I'm just joking, Brother Taylor. <laughs> All right, from 6.30 to 8.30. All right, don't, don't, don't goof up or I'm in a lot of trouble there with the college and career. And because they have an activity afterwards, right? They're going after that. They're, they have a, a class activity at the Nelson Regis home, I believe, if I remember right. And so don't be late because then they'll be they'll be grumpy for their activity. So and and then they'll like twist your kids' ears and that type of stuff. We don't want that happening here. All right, I think that's all the announcements. Other than I was going to mention Fifi. Fifi, last service here, right? Leaving on Friday uh, to go up to I have it written down here, Calvary Baptist Church in Sterling. We're sure going to miss her uh, being around here. Make sure you get around and hug her neck and uh, tell her goodbye here this evening after the service. I think, Ida, you're going to miss her being around, aren't you? Yeah, I figured you would. And so, uh, Zy Paradise, you going to miss her? Yeah, all right. The other one's a little beautiful. You going to miss her? Okay. All right, so we're, we'll be praying for you guys for that. And uh, we're excited for her, the new chapter in her life. And so just be in prayer for her as she transitioned from here to Colorado. I don't know who would want to move to Colorado other than Fifi. God, God wants you there, right? All right. You want to back out on it? All right. I'll give her a chance. She has till Friday morning to back out. And see. we'll see what happens there. All right. Anybody else need a prayer sheet? I think that's all the announcements that we have at this time. Brother Taylor, I don't have my tablet with me, so I don't see any uh, online presence. So if you'll... Uh, word those if they have any this evening if you're joining us by way of live stream if there's something we can pray with you or for you on if we'll comment in the comment section below we'll mention that in our service and the church will be praying with you also let's go through the prayer list here this evening we won't mention the names on the list uh, we've um, brother ever about once a month once every two or three weeks brother brian brings me the list and we we do a purging of the list we take names off of it just so we can keep the list fresh and so if there's someone uh, that we have removed from the list, you can put that person right back on. We, we welcome you to do that. Uh, we just try to keep it where it's a, a fresh list on a daily basis. I told Brother Brian my goal on the list is, is to go from a three-page list to a one-page list. And so I don't know if we'll ever get there for that. I just want to keep some, some important prayer requests before us that we need to pray for uh, on that. So under the category of salvation, are there any names that we can uh, remove from the list? Uh, people who have been saved that we don't know about are there any new names that we need to add to the list under the category of salvation yes Kelly okay taking off Kendall Kelly well so yeah when did he pass away 
two days ago. All right, so pray pray for Miss Carol uh, during this time also. I know she covered your prayer. Pray for the Kelly family at this time. And, um, of course, our condolences to Miss Carol and the family that have. Uh, it's a bummer to hear passed away. But uh, pray for the family at this time. Any others that we can add to the list this evening? I don't see any other. I don't see a hand. I'm so. Lulu, you have to jump up or down or something. I don't know. I've missed you so many times. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Miss Lulu. Cynthia Romero. And who? Okay. You got that, Brother Brian? I'm not even going to try that one. He will make sure he gets his spelling and everything else that we can add. All right. Any others? All right, under the unchurched or newly saved category, are there any names that we can update here this evening? Miss Kelly? Okay, Amaya? I mean, Amaya or Amaya? Any others? I don't see any other hands here. Miss Brother Gary? Ashley? Okay, adding Ashley. Miss Debbie, Greg, lost his wife last year, was it, was it last year? And so pray for uh, Greg, that's Debbie's brother-in-law there. Any others? All right, don't see any other hands that we should call on. I see plenty of hands being raised. How about under military? Military specific request? Any updates here this evening? All right, don't see any hands there for the under illnesses, cancer specific. Good to see Brother Patton here. Of course, uh, continue praying for him and his battle with cancer and other issues also. Uh, thankful that he's here. Any others that we can add to the list or remove from the list um, in the cancer category? Miss Debbie? Randy Stovall. here this evening. How about under other illnesses? This is just other uh, ailments or issues that people are dealing with there. Miss Jeanette? Okay. okay. Taking Adrian Marvin off. She's the top one on the, the uh, right column there. I'm going to remove her. She's recovered from her hip replacement. And so uh, thankful for that. Brother David? Okay. David. Any others? Illnesses? All right, don't see another hand. How about under the unspoken category? Are there any uh, that we can add to the list here for the unspoken category? Riley? We're moving once. Taking it down to two. We can do that. All right, Miss Kayla? Adding one for Kayla. We can do that. Jared? Adding one for Jared. Brother Patton, adding two for Brother Patton. Can't find your name. That's because it's not on there. Adding two. There we go. All right. Who else? Uh, Brother Taylor, adding one for Taylor. Sterling, adding one for Sterling. All right. Don't see any other hands here this evening. Uh, for Westbrook Baptist, uh, Brother Merez. Adding Mr. Haney. Okay. Under the church, uh, Westbrook Baptist Church, the ministries there, pray for uh, the church, those that worship here and attend here for their safety and their protection. But never take that for granted. We all have a lot of church people that travel uh, back and forth all over the place. And uh, we have those church members that are military, that are TDY or deployed. So I'll always pray for the safety and protection of your brothers and sisters in Christ, fellow church members. I pray for the pastor. I covet your prayers on a daily basis. The staff uh, does also you know, leadership of the church. The Vision Fund, that's a work being done around the church. You know, always exciting to see what you know, we're doing there. Uh, Westbrook Kids Program got kicked off to a, a good uh, fall. 
every, all the kids are in school now, so we're now just open from uh, three or s three to six uh, afternoon program. Camilla, what fifty kids or so registered for that, and so uh, thankful for that, and uh, uh, just a blessing for sure. Um, if you pray with us, we we could we could we're using the purple and yellow bus, we're using the white bus, we're using the 15 passenger van, and we could use another 15 passenger van uh, in that ministry also. We, we are stretched pretty thin on some of our uh, routes, and so just, would you make it a matter of prayer? Would you join me in praying for another 15 passenger van? Last time we prayed for a 15 passenger van, the Lord provided a 14 passenger minibus. That's okay. If the Lord wants to do that, we'll do that too. I've checked the prices there. That, that's sixty or seventy thousand dollars on one of those. And so, uh, the problem is with vans right now. Uh, we're shopping. We're looking, uh, looking for the right one that Lord would o give uh, give to us or o make available to us. Uh, in the market in which we are right now, uh, minivans are twice the cost than they should be. I mean, we're, really, they are with twice the miles that they should be. And so, you, you're getting less uh, for more. Uh, that's not the way it should be. Uh, so we're just praying the Lord would bring the right one across our path and just praying the Lord would provide that. So we, if you join us in prayer for that, we, we could utilize, utilize that. And then we'd also be able to utilize that on Sunday uh, services, maybe Wednesday night programs and stuff like that also. Just, just be in prayer for uh, the vehicles that we need there. All right, and then the Ho Hope Children's Home, uh, pray for a set of house parents here in Clovis and other workers. I know they greatly appreciate that. The work that needs to be done, uh, starting uh, remodeling on another wing one of these days. We like we need to do that here soon sometime. Uh, workers, children, everything. I just uh, just pray that God will bring all that together at the same time. Uh, Westbrook Christian Academy got us kicked off to a great uh, s uh, semester already. Um, been able to join the kids on uh, every morning uh, for their pledges and opening exercises. And uh, I'm excited for the future. Uh, just just continue praying for the school, the students here, and the, the children also, or the teachers also. Ministry of the week is our bus ministry as we uh, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come into the Lord's house. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, our bus ministry has, has reaped some great fruit over the years. I'm thankful for that and been able to touch a lot of kids' lives through many, many years of bus ministries here at Westbrook Baptist Church and uh, just mindful that sometimes you might say well we, we don't know how that we don't know about that ministry and what it's doing let me tell you it, it, even if um, uh, let's just say it this way it's a profitable ministry it really is we, we have uh, people who are no longer walking on this earth that came to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and got to meet Jesus and learn about Jesus by riding the church bus and so that, that's well worth one soul being saved. And so it's a, a worthy ministry. Many people have been reached through the bus ministries, um, not just in this church, but churches all around America. You may know people. We have people here that would not be here if it wasn't for bus ministry today, tonight. And so just pray for our, our bus ministry on a, on a weekly bus basis and the workers also as they work there. Under the other category, of course, we trend some of this down also, uh, just praying for our country and uh, the, the, our president, our vice president, elected officials, uh, the election year that we're in, just, just be in prayer for our country. Of course, continue praying for the Ukraine-Russian war six months into this, and, and uh, just praying that Lord would bring that to a close uh, so our missionaries can get back onto the field. Our Christian brothers and sisters in Ukraine and Russia both uh, would be able to meet. And just, just, just pray for the school, uh, pray for the, the war and everything conflict going on there. All right, under the other category, are there any that we can add to the list that's not on the list? Any that we need to add or remove from the list tonight? All right. Yes, sir? Okay, what is her name? Okay, praying for Aaron. Yes, Christina? We can take you off? Oh, good. Praise the Lord for answer prayers. Who else? Anybody else? All right. Ophelia? Okay. Praying for traveling mercies. 
Still there? Any others? I don't see any other hands here this evening. Um, church planners around the United States pray for uh, Clint Maureen Minnick, 29 Palms, California. Micah and Alex Lassiter as they are preparing to start the church there in El Paso. Jeremy and Vanessa Reagan in Grand Island, Nebraska. Uh, Jonathan and Erica Ilsley in Phoenix, Arizona. And Mark and Hannah Martinez there in Boulder, Colorado. Let's pray for our church planners there. Uh, missionaries around the world. Uh, around the world. Mrs. Terrell actually retired. Uh, we'll leave her on the list for uh, till the remainder of the year. Uh, but she's retired and has moved back to the States. I, I believe uh, she's 80-something years old and has spent 40-something years on the mission field. And so a faithful servant. She was here, uh, what was it, eight years ago or so. I think she uh, was here for a service maybe seven years ago. Uh, just didn't come home very often. And so just, just pray for her. Read her resignation letter that she sent out. And uh, just so thankful for the years that she gave. She's on a walker now. She doesn't have a mobility. So she left her truck there at the church in Brazil and all of her Sunday school stuff. And uh, just uh, just uh, thankful for her time there. Uh, we celebrate her retirement and just pray that God will give her good health uh, in her retirement years also. Pray for the Shoals and the boards as they serve in Cambodia. The Disney's and Brother Disney, we're praying for him with with cancer, actually in the states, but they're serving in the field of Chile, and uh, working with the churches there by Zoom and by internet, and so just pray for them. The Jordan family in the Dominican Republic, and the Democuses in Greece. Remember, starting the church there on Mars Hill, and getting ready to go there. The Haynes on the Navajo Nation there in Arizona. The McKinleys as they serve in the field of Ireland. And then our missionaries to Mexico, the Gardeners, uh, Brother Hamilton, and the Smiths. And so if we pray for them. Then our Creative Area Nations, won't mention their name uh, by because this is on live stream. Uh, just pray for those that are restricted nations and for their safety and their protection, the people there as they labor in their fields. And then uh, under our home mission category, of course, Heartland Baptist Bible College uh, kicked off, got uh, Caleb, I know, uh, got enrolled. Thankful for that. Brett's enrolled. Uh, thankful for those uh, getting ready to uh, start their semester here. Uh, pray for them. Uh, Bill and Emma Finch, and then Kyle and and uh, Tiffany McMillan in Seattle and Gig Harbor, both still uh, co-pastoring both church or uh, still pastoring both churches there. And uh, Hope Children's Home in Tampa and Honduras, Jehovah Jireh Ministries. And then Tim and Heather Russell as they've taken the church there in Nixa, kind of a replant or restart of the church. And so just uh, pray for them. All right, Brother uh, Taylor, do we have any online? Okay. Can you turn on a microphone on so we can hear you, Brother? I'm sorry. Do we have another mic back there? Give us that name again, if you will. Philip Nicholas Lunt. For salvation. For salvation. Okay. And then he's been able to share the gospel with with his training in it in his training course. And then Bill Melton asked for prayer for the pastor at the Sandia Baptist Church in Clovis, and then just for pastors in general. Okay. That's it. Super. Is that it? All right. I'm sure. I think that's uh, Tommy uh, Sandia, is that what he said? I can't remember the pastor. That was Prince Street, is Tommy. So uh, just pray for those. All right. And that's all our prayer, late, our prayer sheet here this evening. Let's all stand one last time. We'll sing another song, page uh, 854, Joy Unspeakable. Brother Brian will lead us in the song, and then we'll get into our Bible study tonight. 854, Joy Unspeakable. Let's lift up our voice. Once again, three stands of the song, please. I have found this grace, it's so complete, it's applied every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. It is joy 
unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory in his joy, unspeakable and full of glory, oh, that half have never yet been told. I have found the pleasures I once great. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessings I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, that have has never yet been told on the last I have found a God can tell how its waves of glory roll it is great growing well springing up within my soul it is joy unspeakable and full of glory full of glory full of glory it is joy unspeakable and full of glory oh that have has never yet been told amen all right take your bibles turn to psalm chapter 36 psalm chapter 36 this evening just remain standing we'll read our text this evening and get into our bible study good to see everybody here on a Wednesday night. Man, I love our Wednesday night services. Sunday nights are my favorite services. Uh, Wednesday nights would be like a close second. I, I love our Wednesday night crowd. Uh, good to see people coming and, and making a priority to come to pray one for another and to uh, sing praises. It's, it's just a good midweek recharge if you think about it that here a little bit. Uh, come back in. Anybody's batteries ever get drained and you just need to recharge them a little bit in your spiritual life? Okay, I, that's more people uh, agreeing with that than I anticipated, but I think that's a true statement. I think we all need that at times. And so we're going to look here in Psalm chapter 36, just 12 verses. We're going to read all of these this evening, all these verses, and we're going to get into our Bible study tonight. Psalm chapter 36, David is a psalmist here uh, recording these. He says, The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart, that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. In other words, he's not wise and he doesn't do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a ray that is not good, or in a way that is not good. Maybe I'll say that right the third time. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep. O Lord, thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. O oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me. Let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Father, we come to you this evening and thankful for the time we can have fellowship with each other, 
sing praises to your name, pray one for another, open the precious word of God that we can find encouragement and strength. And Father, just a, just a, an encouragement just to keep going on, keep living for you, see your goodness even in our life. So Father, I pray you'll bless the reading of your word this evening, Father, that you would help us to see the truths, apply them to our lives, for it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you. May be seated. Anybody remember what happened Saturday? What was going on Saturday? Anybody remember? Rain. Yes, rain. We needed the rain. Water is important especially here on the High Plains. If you have been following the news and our water tables and the water shortages, and the drought condition that we've been in in this region, uh, water is important. It's absolutely essential, water is. But it's absolutely essential for life. It, it's, it's, we can't live without water. Uh, we need it. We need it so bad. We we want it for our grass. I, I love it that it rains so I could turn my sprinkler system off and save a couple dollars on my water bill this month. That's a wonderful thing for sure. Now, I don't have to, listen, I don't have to water my yard in order to live, but I need to have water to live. And there's there's conveniences and there's some necessities in life. One thing in life is one necessity in life is water. We, we understand that. We, we really, I think, we, we see that. It, it, it quenches our thirst. If you're out working, if you're out mowing, or if you're out working hard, some people like, some people think milk quenches their thirst. I think, I think people who have their thirst quenched by milk are weird. But water quenches. And I know there's Powerade and, and Red Bulls and, and uh, uh, what, what's some other things? Um, uh, Gatorade, that's what I was trying to think of. Thank you, Brother Brian. There, there's those things that quenches, propel, quenches our thirst, those type of things. It, it, it's important. But, but water is absolutely necessary. It's essential. It's refreshing on a hot, hot day, a, a day that we're working to, to be able to drink that. And, but, but one thing that we see is water is not only essential, not only quenching of the thirst or refreshing, but it's life-giving. We can't live without water. We need it. And, and we, we think about the rain that we had Saturday, a little bit on Sunday, and a little bit of sprinkles here and there. We, we, we're thankful for it, but we understand that water is life-giving here. When, when we think about spiritual, our spiritual lives, our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we think about how water plays into even our own spiritual life. There, there is no life without spiritual water. Can I, can I say it that way tonight? The spiritual water. I think about Jesus at the woman at the well, remember? Uh, talking about the life, or excuse me, talking about the water. And, and if you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. It, it's eternally quenching of your thirst, this water that we bring to it. Well, that, that, I get to Psalm 36, and I see this even in verse 9, for then thee is a fountain of life. The, this kind of a, uh, toward the end part of the psalm there reminds me of, of what Jesus is saying in John chapter 4, the, the well and the water, the need of this water, this living water. He referred to it in John chapter 4 to this Samaritan woman. The Bible says that our God here is a fountain of life. And, and if, you, if you just stop and think about that here just a little bit here, the fountain of life that God gives to us, the refreshingness of life that he gives to us, the, the quenching of our life that the Lord gives to us here, he, 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 he's the fountain of life. Just as people can die of physical thirst, you and I can die from spiritual thirst. So how can we quench our spiritual thirst? I think about those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. The Sermon on the Mount tells us about, blessed are they that thirst, hunger and thirst for righteousness. We, we, we think about our spiritual thirst being 
quenched and how can we have that well we we have that quench that 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 thirst being quenched by a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and knowing that we're saved and knowing that we're on our way to heaven I'm telling you spending time on in the Bible in God's word on a daily basis can can quench your spiritual thirst and help you in your spiritual walk with God your spiritual life singing praises to the Lord, uh, assembling yourselves in church as we assemble ourselves together. We, we, we see that we can have this life giving um, because of the water of God, because of the word of God, because of the things that he gives to us. Jesus, Jesus did not design the Christian life to be a life of burden. And then I, I know, I, I think about what John chapter 10, he came to give us life and life more abundantly and and, and, and sometimes we look at the Christian life of a life of a burden, but that's not how God designed the Christian life. He, he designed the Christian life to be a life of joy, uh, unspeakable joy, uh, an exciting life that he gives to us. And, and, and the more that we drink from this fountain of life, the more that we tap into the Lord Jesus Christ, the more satisfying our Christian life becomes. If, if you're here this evening and, and your Christian life is not satisfying, you need to tap into the fountain of life. If, if your Christian life is not a life of happiness, a life of joy, and something's wrong, let, let me start with you. Let me help you, encourage you to start looking at your spiritual life. How are you doing spiritually? Now, you may have a job. You may be physically happy and physically well and you may have a good job, and you may have a good home, you may have good cars, you may have a good family, but, but on the inside, you're just withering up and dying. Well, how's your spiritual life doing? Now, how, how's the life that God's designed for you to have in your life? When we, when we come to Psalm chapter 36, I, I believe it's, it's a talk about talking about the, this fountain of life that God is and, and that God desires to be in each and every one of our lives. The first couple of verses, he, he deals with the sinner and who the sinner is and what the sinner thinks or what the sinner says of himself. Now, what does a sinner think? Well, a lot of times sinners you come in contact with and I come in contact with, uh, they'll say this, oh, I'm all right. Hey, can I invite you to church? Nope, I'm okay. Hey, can I give you some good news? Can I, can I give you a, a gospel track? Can I... Yeah, there we go. Hey, can I give you a gospel track? Can I give you some good news? Can I share a plan of salvation with you? No, hey, I'm okay. Hey, I, 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 I'm, I, me and God, we're okay. I, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that think them and God is okay, and they're not okay. And, and if they die without the Lord Jesus Christ, they will, as we would say, they would split hell wide open because of their sin and because of their condition before God. And and, and so we see what the sinner says about himself here. And, and, and hey, I'm doing okay. I, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm a pretty good guy. I, I, I get along. I, I, I'm a good husband. I'm a good wife. I, I'm a good father. I, I'm do, but the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none righteous. And you and I understand that. Here we find ourselves at a church on a Wednesday night. So it, this would be the the center nucleus of our church, basically. This would be those that are regular attenders, and, and most likely many of us know Jesus Christ, if not all of us would know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. But the gavel has been dropped, and the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. No one's perfect, no one's without sin, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the, the, the sinner says, no, I don't need God. The sinner, the wicked, the 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 rep reprobate, he, he's one that says, I don't need salvation. I don't need God. I'm okay all by myself. The judge of the earth someday will judge him and declare that he is guilty before God. All are lost underneath that wrath of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For, for those of us here tonight that know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, We've been given the, the responsibility to compassionately confront the loss of this world. 
that we would be a witness, that we'd be a testimony. We, we're going into our, our end of the summer campaign, and we're going to encourage you to reach others for Christ. Each one, reach one. And, and, and to compassionately compel those that need Christ to come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. We've been given that mandate to go into all the world, and, and not just another country, but right here in Clovis, our, our, ourselves, that we would confront people with the truth of what God's Word says about sinners. God doesn't hate sinners. We shouldn't hate sinners. When sinners sin, it shouldn't surprise us. We shouldn't be like aghast because of what sinners do. The Bible tells us that they are guilty before God. Uh, today in, in our school, I was uh, walking through. Miss Debbie was in there uh, talking to Dakota. Where, where's Dakota at? She's not here. She's not here tonight? Oh, so you go home and tell him I've talked about him in church, and everybody knows he wasn't here tonight. Can you do that for me, Sterling? Okay, all right, good. It kind of blows my whole illustration up. No, but we were talking to Dakota in school today, and he was memorizing the Romans Road. And when I walked in the classroom, Miss Debbie was talking about the importance of knowing the order of the Romans Road and the order of, of presenting the gospel. That way he could talk to his friend and, and, and know if his friend knows Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. And he's memorized. I, I love that. I love, I, listen, I think... All of our kids should learn the memory verses of the Romans Road and how they can present the gospel to someone. But we were, we we're kind of, sometimes we, we get those jumbled up, and it's important to know the Romans Road, the proper way to present the gospel. Because I, I use this illustration when you tie your shoe, what's the first thing you have to do? Put your shoe on, Jim. That's what I told him. He's going, oh, and he was talking about, it. he goes, I don't, I just, I just, I don't tie my shoe. No, but you have to put the shoe on first. If you don't put the shoe on, it doesn't do you any good to tie the shoe. It doesn't keep it onto your foot. So, so there's a proper thing. Well, one of the, the first proper things is in witnessing or telling others about Jesus is to tell them that they need Jesus, that they're a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and, and so we, we talked about the, the Romans road, and, and then there's the wages of sin, and then there's the the gift of salvation, and, and, and we can see that you can receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I, I'm excited that as a, a senior at Westbrook Christian Academy, Dakota is learning how to tell others about Jesus. Praise the Lord for that. That's wonderful. We ought to, we, that's, we ought, to, ought to ask him on Sunday, hey, how's that going? Encourage him and encourage each other and, and, and taking a track and passing out and everything else. I, I love it, but this is a thing. The sinner says, I don't need God. I'm okay. But you and I, we're supposed to compassionately tell them that they need God, that they're not okay. I mean, if they think they're okay and they're not going to do okay, if, if their house is on fire, someone ought to tell their house is on fire. We do that, and, and that's what we're supposed to do. The sinner in the first couple of verses, and they're saying, man, I'm okay, I don't need anything, I'm okay. We see that they're, they're not trying to do good, they're, they're wicked in their ways. But look at verse 5. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. As, as much sin is in the world, as much as the wicked people need Christ, as much as people fight against God and the things of God and the wickedness prevails in the world, the psalmist David says, Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. That, that, that's really, a, it's a turning point of, that, of this chapter, talking about the wicked and those that need, need God in their lives. And, and then the psalmist just saying here, Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Just as the heavens cover the earth, God's mercy covers each and every one of us. If it wasn't for God's mercy, we wouldn't be here tonight. If it wasn't for God's mercy, we wouldn't have the jobs that we have and the health that we have in our life. This psalm, the, the sinner has been introduced to us, a sinner who should be judged. But the psalmist David says, Thy mercy... Listen, what, what we have in salvation is a declaration of innocency because of salvation. We, we are justified. God looks at us as if we never sinned before. And he looks at us as perfect and, and, and righteous and, and holy, just like his son is the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I, we don't deserve that. That's God's mercy that he gives us. His mercy covers us and covers 
each and every one of us. The, the, the ones, you and I, that deserve God's wrath, but, but immediately God says that his mercy is available to each and every one of us. That ought will, to that will make us encouraged. And that ought to help us in our lives here. Then, then look what else it says. Thy right, oh, uh, let's, let's not, not, not skip this one. And thy faithfulness reacheth up to the clouds. Can, can I tell you tonight, God's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful each and every day that his faithfulness reaches unto the cloud. No, no matter what you're dealing with in life, no matter what you're facing at home or at work or at school, no matter the situation that you find, find yourself in, remember this, God is faithful. God, God is faithful. He, 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 he's there. He's never not been there. He'll see us through. He'll carry us through. And then it goes on here. In verse 7, thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Have you been to Colorado and seen the mountains? Have you been to Montana and seen the great mountains and, and see the, the vastness and the majestic mountains there? And then the psalmist David is just simply saying, thy righteousness is like the great mountains. There, he, God is right and he is righteous. Thy judgments are a great deep. We, we all deal with things that we don't understand in life. Why did God let this happen? Why did God let this? Why is this going on? How is this going on? We, we deal with these things that we don't understand, but we can by faith as a Christian, by a believer in God, by faith we can believe that God is righteous and that he'll never do wrong. He'll never do wrong. In, in other words, if, if, you're, if you're pouting tonight, no one pouts at Westbrook, thankful for that. Those are the other churches in town. But if you're pouting tonight because of something that you're going through, Listen, God's righteous. He's done right. He's merciful. In other words, you deserve a lot worse than what you're going through right now. But by his mercy, he's, he's keeping you from what you deserve. He's keeping me from what I deserve here because he is, he's merciful, but he's righteous. He always, 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 always does right. He'll never do wrong. Verses 7 through verses 9 Look at that. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Are you thankful for his love? <laughs> Are you thankful for his kindness? Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. I mean, this is the thing. We can be abundantly satisfied with God. You, you know what our children need to learn? How to be satisfied. Because the day in which we live today, no one's satisfied. They want more. It's like the horse leaf, the proverb talks about, crying out for more, more. They're never satisfied. And, 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 and probably us parents and grandparents, we kind of built that. We kind of built, built that nest that we're in and stuff. But the, we, we, the, the day, the, the society in which we live, no one is satisfied. The Bible tells us here that with God, we can be satisfied in our lives. And we can be satisfied with what God puts in our lives and what we have in our lives. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life, and thy light we shall see light. We, we see here, we, we can walk in his light. Think, think about that. As, as we are in his light, we shall see light. The, the illumination of, of God even in our life and what he's providing in our lives. God allows us to see light in his light. When we walk with Jesus Christ as our light, I, I think about his word being a light unto our path. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know, where, I don't know what step I should do. Well, just, just allow his word to be a light and and you don't need to see the end result. You just need to see the next step. And just trust God by faith. And realize that God is righteous. God is right. And God is merciful. And if his light, his word, and, and the direction that he's given to you, if it's illuminating this step, let me tell you, you can trust God in that step. If it's not lit, don't step. It may be an abyss that you step into. But when God is giving you direction and you see what he is illuminating before you, you can trust him and you can step by faith and follow him in those things. I, I think about Isaiah. I, I have it bookmarked right here. Isaiah chapter 30. 
And the Bible says here in verse 20, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20, you can if you want to, you can look. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, you shall not yet shall not thy teachers be removed into the corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Listen to what else it says. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk in it. <laughs> and, and when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, and, and so this is, uh, 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 Riley, come up here. Come, hurry, 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 hurry. Okay, stand right here. Okay, face everybody. I need something. Here, give me your tie. Take your tie off. He didn't want to wear one anyway. Take your glasses off. Can you see anything? Good. Can you breathe? can't see anything. Okay, I'll do this. Open this. Okay. Wave at everybody. Oh. You know which one? The last one. Okay, right. Yeah, there's this one. Okay. All right. Okay, but he can't see. Okay? So this is what I'm going to say. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give you direction because you can't see where you're going. Okay? But as your teacher... Teacher, I'm going to tell you where to go. Okay? And, and you can trust me. Okay? But I'm not going to let you hurt yourself. Okay? I'm just teaching. Okay. Okay. So I want you I want you to go this way. Okay? I want you to just start walking. Okay? Okay. Keep walking. Take big steps. Come on, dude. All right. Turn to your right. Okay? Now keep walking. your left. Take a couple steps. Stop. Turn to your left. Take two big steps. Those aren't big steps. Take another step. Okay. Turn to your right. Okay. Now go straight. Turn to your left a little. Turn to your left a little. Turn to your left a lot. Okay. Now turn to your right. Now walk. Don't be feeling, trust me. Stop. Turn to your left. Turn to your left. Turn to your left. Now walk straight. Simple illustration, right? Just a thing. Stop. Good. All right, go sit down. Simple illustration, right? Well, this is the thing. Your teachers will guide you. The, the people that God has placed into your life, you may not see which way to go. Hey, listen, kids, you can trust your parents. You can trust them. Well, my parents aren't perfect. No, neither are mine, but you can still trust them. L listen, no one loves you more than your mom or your dad. Nobody, uh, other than God. You can trust your parents. L listen, you can trust your Sunday school teachers. You can trust your bus workers. You can trust your school teachers. You can trust... You can trust your teacher because there come a time in your life that you're saying, I don't know which way I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, trust the teachers that God's placed in your life. And, and then let me encourage you this way. Trust God's word in your life. Trust the, the teaching of God's word when you read your Bible, when you're, I don't know which, I, I, and, and you'll hear them saying, turn this way and turn that way and turn this way. Just simply trust the Lord. And, and in doing so, when, when, we, when we say that, this is what the Bible says. This is the way, walk ye in it. Well, I don't know if this is the way. How can we know this is the way? I think about what Jesus said about the, 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 the way to heaven. And doubting Thomas said, we know not where the thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, life. No man come to the Father but by me. That, that, that we, it's just simply saying as we're, as we're walking, sometimes we can question the way. Sometimes we can question the motives. Sometimes we can question... Uh, the end result of what we're doing, but this is we, we see from the word of God here that God is directing us and God is directing us and, and, and guiding us through the teaching of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. We can trust the way that God is leading us. We can trust the teachers. We can trust these things in our life. The Bible here says that the, 
that, that, that God's good and God is right and God will lead us. This is the way. He will, as we walk in His light, we will see light. Look at verse 10. I have to go. Riley took too long. I'm, I lost some time here. For thee is in the fount, first line, for thee is the fountain of life. In thy light we shall see light. O oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Listen, David is praying, this is a prayer here. Oh Lord, would you continue your loving kindness to them that know you? Will you will you will you will you show loving kindness? We we know that it's God's desire for everybody to come know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. The Bible says for all uh, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The, the Bible says for the wages, that's what I was going to say, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I think of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the thing. God's desire is everybody comes to know Jesus. Your neighbors, your co-workers, everyone that we're confessionally supposed to be telling about Jesus and their need of a Savior here. And, and, and the psalmist David here says right here, Oh, continue thy loving kindness. He, he, he's, he's just asking that his loving kindness would continue into those that come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Are, are you one of those that know Christ? You know Jesus Christ? As your personal Savior, probably the majority of us here tonight is. And we just see here from Scripture, the Bible says, Continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee. We can say this, God will show loving kindness to you tomorrow. God will show you loving kindness the day after tomorrow. God will show you loving kindness ten years from now because you know Him. It's just a fact. It's just a, the fact of God's Word that He will show His loving kindness to each and every one of us. In verse 11 and verse 12, let's, let's read those and we'll close with these couple of thoughts here. Let not the foot of the pride come against me. And let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There, there are the workers of iniquity fallen. It's like this. There are the worker of iniquities fallen. There they have fallen. There they are here. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise here. So, so we see here in these couple of verses about, we see a couple of words here. They, they are fallen. Who? The wicked. They are fallen. Those are the wicked ones. They have fallen. They have fallen there. They shall not be able to rise up. And, and we go, well, where's there? Where's there? There is where they're living without Christ. There is, it's not a geographical place. It's not saying, well, they're in Texas or they're in New Mexico or, or they're on your street or wherever it might be here. There is, is where you must be when you've fallen. And, and I can say it that's why like, this is there where you find Christ. Jesus Christ can save you. You have to come to the end of yourself. You have to see that he's the way, the life, and the truth, and he can give you salvation. There is where we meet God. There's where you and I have met the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, where God becomes uh, the care. God becomes the one that's keeping your life, the one that gives you salvation in your life. No, no matter what is happening around us, we can go where God is. He's there for us. In the rough days, the uncertain days, He's with us. He's a wonderful Savior. He's faithful to the end. He shows loving kindness. He is the fountain of life. I'm telling you, that's who Jesus Christ is. He loves us. He wants us to share that love with others in his life. He is the fountain of life. It's not a burden. It's not gruesome. The, the Christian life isn't one of, of, of regrets. It's a life of joy, a life of happiness, a, a life that we get to experience God's mercy, God's loving kindness, God's direction, God's protection, God's guidance. I could keep going and keep going and going. That's what God desires for each and every one of us. See that fountain of life. Let's all sing. Father, we come to you this evening just thankful for the time we could spend in your word tonight. 
So, Father, I, I believe as we've seen just an encouragement once again tonight of those that live apart from you, those of us that follow you, your goodness, your mercy in our lives. Father, help us as we live for you. Help us to be have open ears to your word that the Spirit of God can guide us. Teachers, parents in our lives can help guide us. Help the young people and the young adults, as the, help the old adults not to be stubborn against the guidance of God in their life. And Father, I just pray that you would help in this idea and these thoughts here tonight. Father, I pray that you would give us guidance. Father, that you would give us willingness to follow. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Miss Katie, if you would play a verse or two of invitation, a time of uh, contemplation of what we've heard tonight a time of imitation. Maybe someone just needs to simply say yes to the Lord. Maybe a child needs to go to a parent and say, I'm sorry. I need to follow you. I need to trust you. Maybe maybe a Christian needs to say tonight, I, I need to be more thoughtful of the lost around me. Maybe I need to carry some tracks with me. Maybe I need to invite some people to church. Maybe someone here follow Dakota's lead even in school and memorizing the Romans road and in the proper order so you can be a witness and tell others how they can know Jesus as their Savior and the need of it in their life going to the time of reaching others this next month just an opportunity for us to understand the, the compelling nature of God in our lives to go into the highways and the hedges Tell them to come in the Lord's house, witnessing and invite invitations and tracks. Thankful for God's righteousness in our lives. Mercy, loving kindness. Think about the joy unspeakable tonight comes from a life of Christ or with Christ, living for Christ, surrendered life to Him, allowing Him to guide us and direct us in our lives, bring great joy, living for the right person. Thank you, Katie. We'll pray for our offering here this evening. God bless you uh, for being here. Uh, let's uh, pray for the offering then we'll receive it tonight. Father, thank you for the time in your word tonight, the encouragement that we see once again. And Father, I'm thankful for people that you placed in my life that has helped me through some difficult times in my life, how I can trust their judgment and trust their guidance. Father, I'm th so thankful for the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God in my life. Father, thankful for my wife, my children, those that you have placed in my life. I'm thankful for the encouragement that I can receive from them also to do right, to live right. Father, I just pray that you'll bless our time this evening as we receive our offering. Fathers, we're faithful in our tithes and our offerings. Fathers, we give to the mission projects around the world. Father, that you would bless the gift and the giver. Father, thank you for your goodness to us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, you may be seated. God bless you.
right. God bless you. Go. We'll see you on Sunday.